Earlier this week, in what can be described as the end of the tunnel for presidential election petitions, the Supreme Court brought to a close the uncertainties around who won the presidential election. Now that the political outlook seems to be more settled, the focus is on the economic outlook. Tonight, Baba Jido Gusso, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's data consultant, is here to share insights about the economic challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Great to have you on the news at 10, Baba Good Jide. evening, Ayat Sunday. Yes, all right, let's start off very quickly. Um, among the big economic stories for the week was the 26 trillion Naira um, proposed 2024 budget by the federal government and, of course, the 1.9 trillion Naira generated by the state as revenue for the year 2022. That was last year. So tell us, how significant are these numbers? I think that these numbers are very significant. Um, and that's because, remember, May 29, the president was sworn in. It's now five months after. Um, and I'd like to start from this perspective. Remember, we presented this to... The president. To the president. He hasn't yet picked it up, I think, maybe because we're waiting for the Supreme Court's judgment. But he still has to pick this and hang it in his bedroom. And I'll explain... Just to remind... Okay, exactly. Again, just to remind him about how significantly fast he needs to run. By hitting the ground running, like we said the last time, based from the picture. He needs to move faster than Usain Bolt. And I'll explain why. Between May... 2023, five months ago when we presented this and today, a lot has changed in Nigeria. And I'm not talking about the exchange rate or the cost of living, Ayotunde. In the last five months, two million babies have been born. Just in five months, Nigeria's population has increased by two million people. Children that are now looking up to not just their parents, they are looking up to President Tinumbu for help. And so he needs to keep that in mind about how quickly things need to change. I tell people right now that Nigeria actually needs three presidents, and that's what President Inumbu represents. Because the peculiarities of northern Nigeria are significantly different from the peculiarities and opportunities in southern Nigeria. And so President Inumbu now has to act as three in one. And even the numbers prove it. Let's take a look at the difference between the north and southern Nigeria, especially if we take a look at what has happened in the last decade. It will also, also understand that what is required in northern Nigeria is different from southern Nigeria. Hi, Otunde. Let's look at what happened 12 years ago, based on the facts available from the National Bureau of Statistics. They say that in 2012, Yes, the country generated, the states, the 36 states generated approximately 580 billion in 2012. But Ayotunde, 82% of that money generated by all the states came from states in southern Nigeria. 82% of all revenue generated across all the states came from southern Nigeria. In the last decade, nothing significant has changed. Based on that last report you just talked about, the National Bureau of Statistics says that out of all the revenue generated by Nigerian states, 78% still comes from southern Nigeria. In other words, Ayotunde, here's why this is important. Northern Nigeria accounts for almost 80% of Nigeria's land. Northern Nigeria is where the gold and non oil natural resources are. Northern Nigeria accounts for more than half of Nigeria's population. So in simple terms, Northern Nigeria really is Nigeria's resource headquarters. However, Nigeria's resource headquarters is significantly underperforming. You saw the numbers, only 22% of revenue across all the states generated comes from Northern Nigeria. And so the president needs to have, and that's why I talk about a president for northern Nigeria. The numbers show that there now has to be a special focus for northern Nigeria. Yes, it's the resource headquarters of the country. However, it's also the headquarters for out-of-school children, the headquarters for unemployment. And so... so yeah, I was going to ask you that, so from the picture we've, and from what we've seen there, how significantly different is the economy of southern Nigeria 
you know, to that of northern Nigeria. Again, Let's President, put that in perspective. President, for northern Nigeria, we've seen the reason because of the challenges. It remains the same. If northern Nigeria were to keep going at Ayotunde at the rates it, was, it is going in terms of revenue generation, Ayotunde, the fact shows that it will take seven decades for northern Nigeria to catch up to southern Nigeria in terms of internally generated revenue. You heard that right. It will take seven decades. Now, look at southern Nigeria. It also has its challenges. Foreign direct investment, most of the foreign direct investment comes into southern Nigeria. Look at the numbers in front of us. In 2020, for instance, 19.8 trillion naira worth of goods was imported into Nigeria. 98% of those goods came into Lagos and Rivers. In simple terms, almost all of Nigeria's import challenges comes from southern Nigeria. Goods come into southern Nigeria. Majority of those goods stays in southern Nigeria. In simple terms, southern Nigeria is Nigeria's financial headquarters. And right now, foreign direct investment challenges based on the facts from the NBS shows that even southern Nigeria has a financial problem. Oh, Northern sorry. Nigeria has a resource problem. Southern Nigeria has a financial problem. So very quickly, of course, the IMF uh, wants uh, or the MF expects Nigeria's economy to grow by 2.9% this year in 2023. But of course, the president says he wants to achieve uh, this by uh, making the, uh, uh, the growth rate uh, significantly higher. Very quickly, how can he achieve this? Solutions. Let's take a look at the solutions. Let's look at the numbers. The president now needs to follow the numbers and stop just following the talk. And if you look at the chart of the week, the numbers explain everything. Nigeria's trend doesn't lie in government spending. It lies with the people. And so look at our growth between 2015 and 2022, looking at the economic growth. 17% growth, private household spending. Investments, looking at it from the gross domestic pro product perspective, 1%. Net exports is in red, declined by 16%. Government spending only by 9% has grown. And clearly, we've seen that within our, our economic growth between 2015 and 2022 has also grown by 9%. The fastest growth has come from families. So the key is for the president to improve the welfare of families. If you get Nigerians, Ayotunde, you and I, and a lot of the low-income, middle-income, and high-income earning families to spend more, to purchase more, that is really the key to economic growth. Not the government spending and not um, any other thing. All those things, all those, catal um, all those other factors will help, but the key number the president needs to look at is how well and how fast are Nigerians spending. I today, my time how, spent. <laughs> that time spent and so much, and thank you so much again, Baba Wajidogu, for your analysis there. We thank you so much again. On the pleasure is mine, I today.